Hi! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your first fantastic Monday of the month. October the 3rd, 2022. And this one we're going to have episode 8, 61, part 1. Today we're going to learn to sin not. Beginning with Ephesians 4, 26, compiled from Henry M. Morris. So if you're excited about another another fantastic Monday and the first, the, the beginning of a fresh new week and then the first week of October, smash that like button and smashing the like button will help get the video get the channel out to other other people because that liking it will help it reach a broader audience more or less so but but um, comment what you what you look forward to this this week and maybe this month Maybe out of the month of what you've got something special planned for the month or you just go take it take it day by day or what. Let me know. Subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share the video in general with your family and friends, and by liking it, we'll help share the videos in a broader sense. And help me reach the goal of not a goal, but I have still have four subscribers to hit the 20 mark. So you have until Columbus Day to get to hit that mark. If you don't hit it by midnight on Columbus Day, after Columbus Day is over, but but on the day of Columbus Day, if by midnight, then I move I, then I moved that point up to Halloween. Just using it holiday wise so it could be a little easier to figure out what how long you got so. but it's all I ask for four subscribers to hit that 20 mark and then I'll go from there how many how many more I want after that so if you do that for me I greatly appreciate each and every one it helps helps that number to get there so so without further ado, let's sin not. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So there are many occasions when a Christian might be rightly angered by some ugly word or incident, and thus he's strongly tempted to respond in kind. The verse I just read, however, reminds us that such a reaction for a Christian is sin. And it urges us to get control of our anger before sundown. We are not able to let our anger fester. We are not to let our anger fester until it breaks out in, in action. So don't let your anger eat you up from the inside before let find something that will calm yourself down before that and then don't let that anger fester up in you that it eats you up and then you do something that you that you regret if you get angry and if you hold in just a little bit then find something that will calm you down it's a little uh, a tip right, let, let, let um Find something that makes you happy and makes you and it'll calm you calm yourself. Get that anger to cool off, or what anger you got. Let it cool off that anger, and you will be. You should be good. You shouldn't let anger boil inside of you for too long. Find something to help to cool that anger down before it gets too too much and it causes you to do something drastic if you let it let it go too long 
Because you don't need no no trouble out of the anger if you do something stupid. So. so a very similar command was given long ago to Old Testament believers. Also, Psalm 4.4, Stand in awe and sin not, commune with your own heart upon your, your bed and be still. Selah. So an angry it is far better to wait and communicate with God about it in bed than to bring recriminations in the street or perhaps in the home against the ones who have angered us. So talk about that in the home. Um, spouses, most of the time it's especially the men that do, do the majority. I know there's some instances where the woman is woman is the uh, aggressor, but most of the time the ones I've heard here in the news and stuff, it's mostly being a man um, doing things toward a woman. Or even children. I've heard that. Causing harm to his own children. I haven't yet heard the the, the woman on the other side having the woman do the um not too many. I have heard I uh, I do know growing up there was a woman that killed her own children for something that was I think something in her life that angered her. Or the kids angered her about something, and she she killed them. And yet there was somebody down the line that was real close to to our family growing up. It wasn't immediate friends, but it was somebody that we or or somebody that we was what do they call that. Somebody that we knew who it was, or had met. I I've never I was never met met the family, but I don't remember. I might have been real little, and but my mom talking about it. That was it was something to do with the end of a an acquaintance, basically. Something something festered up in her. Killed her kids, drowned them in the in the bathtub. It's not bad as that one, the the one mother that killed her kids by putting kids in the car, getting out at a what do they call a boat dock, and dro and let the car just drive into the water. The kids still strapped into their into their safety seats and. Let the car just go out in the water and sink. But you very occasionally, you very seldomly hear of a woman aggressor against a spouse or children or family members. It's most of the time the uh, husband doing the aggressor of the bit. It's most of the time the man doing something against a woman or kids or family members so I'd say eight times out of ten I'll just I'll just put that way, eight times out of ten it's the man being the aggressor and then the other two times it's the woman because I know of two or off the top of my head I can remember two maybe three that I know of, it was a woman doing the doing something harmful. But don't let the anger well up inside you and eat you up. So, okay, sorry for rambling on that for too long. But the Lord Jesus Himself is always our example. And in First Peter two twenty three, it says, "Who was He? Who, when He was reviled, reviled not again?" When he suffered, he threatened not, 
committed himself to, to him that judges righteously. So anger is often one of the most difficult areas to overcome in the Christian life. And as James says in James chapter 3 verses 8 through 10, the tongue, the tongue can no man tame. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So nevertheless, what man cannot tame, God can. Amen? James 1, 19-20 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Romans 12, 19, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So lastly, anger may come, but to act in anger is sin. So don't let the anger well up inside of you until it's too late, and you it causes drastic measures. Get it before it heats up. And, and calm your, find something to calm it. Calm yourself down. You will be you will be well off after that. So, but coming up tomorrow in episode eight sixty two part one, we're gonna learn about angels round about. Psalm thirty four seven is our beginning passage, which will be another psalm entry, psalm choices of life entry. All compiled by Henry M. Moore. So stay tuned for that. I'll get to that in just a few minutes. But you'll see that one tomorrow morning at 7. So, With that said, I love you. I appreciate you. Sorry again for the little ramble. The little long, longer than usual ramble. I did not want to, I did not want to ramble on that subject too long. But it just went, I guess, Sometimes you get on a certain point and it's good to talk it out, to explain what you're trying to say. To me, sometimes I'm trying to explain it. It might take a, take a couple extra minutes. But but with that said, I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on and trust in God. He'll keep you safe. And all you say and do in 2022 and beyond. And until later, peace out, everybody. So long, farewell, have a great rest of your fantastic Monday morning, and come back again after one, where we will be lear learning about going on a mirror test. Learning about a mirror test. Or taking a mirror test from Katara Patton, derived from James 1, 22-27. So stay tuned for that, I'll get to that. Just a few minutes, but you'll see that after one today. So with that said, God bless everyone, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Goodbye.